Coming up in our tonight's newscast, the Bishop of Boya, some members of the Presbyterium, staff of some institutions and services of Boya, and equally those of the regional Apache's finance with acronym RIPAFIN, met earlier today Wednesday to strategize on the possibility of parishes in the diocese to hold shares in that financial institution. The last meeting took place at Bishop Pius Hour Memorial Pastoral Center in Moliko. And a few days to July 1st, Kadikis transferred within the Diocese of Boya are expected in their new workstations, giving their enormous contribution in assisting priests. The pastoral director for Boya Diocese, Reverend Father Theo Piseka, calls on the Christians to give them the utmost support. And the struggle for the people of Wovila community in the small support neighborhood here in Boya to have portable water continues. Divisional Officer for Boya, Abba Abdurrahman, chaired a meeting recently with the community members to proffer an ending solution to the water situation in that community. Hello there, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to this midweek edition of Divine Mercy Prime. Today is June 26, 2024. You're welcome. Stay now. Those are the news headlines. We'll be back in a jiffy with the full newscast. Welcome back to this edition of our news. My name is Jude Mbaku Munyo, live from Boya in Cameroon. Let's begin our news with the top stories you just got there. Possibilities and discussions are on the way for parishes of the diocese to have shares with the regional parishes microfinance known with the acronym RIPAFIN of the Diocese of Boya. It constituted the main discussion of a General Assembly meeting that held today. The meeting took place at the Bishop Pius Hour Memorial Pastoral Center in Moluko, chaired by the Chief Shepherd of the Diocese of Boya, His Lordship Michael Bibi, and brought together members of the Presbyterium, equally staff and heads of institutions and services of the Diocese of Boya, as well as some Christians, to provide situation a way forward for that microfinance structure. From our newsroom, we have Jamlatu Tontan, who was part of that meeting. She came back with this report. The General Assembly meeting of Ripafin that took place at the Bishop Pius, our Memorial Pastoral Center, Moliko Boya, brought together different institutional heads, priests, and some members of the various Catholic Church and other institutions. The meeting, which was conveyed by His Lordship Bishop Michael Bibi, started at exactly 10 a.m. on a session of meditation as it is the culture of the Catholic body each time the gather. His Lordship Bishop Michael Bibi read to the hearing of everyone a proposed number of shares the various parishes should acquire from the microfinance organ, Ripafim, ranging from 10 shares right up to 300 shares. He equally took out time to explain to the understanding of those that are novices while encouraging the different parish priests to look into their coffers reserves and open up shares for the church that will in turn reproduce mighty profits to their respective parishes. Catching up with the general manager of Repafin, Madame Joyce Eneke Bisson, she shared her view on the purpose of the meeting held. The purpose of the general assembly meeting was actually to sensitize and create more awareness amongst parishes and institutions that Repafin feels is now in existence. You know, and because they form a core of this of this uh, microfinance needs to also help us sensitize to Christians in their parishes to know about the Catholic fields. The opinions of the other parish priests and the institutional heads in the view of the meeting and the aspect of shareholding by parishes was not left out. Parishes will really benefit from the shares because the money which we put into the shares will not be reimbursed to you. You only be benefiting from the interest that that money is producing. So with this share, it will come a long way. If you are able to raise 10 million for our share, we know that we are going to be part of that. The meeting saw it close after the opportunity given for question and answer sessions, proposals, and announcements. Meanwhile, there's room 
for deliberations on what was discussed at the meeting and the various priests and institution heads look forward for the next session of deliberation and possible decisions arrived at. Jamila Tutontande with a report and after that meeting she caught up with some attendees of that General Assembly of Ripathin who shared with us their thoughts and vision for Ripathin. Let us get to hear them in this excerpt. Father Pascal Sibel, the principal of CUIB at Jamila High School. Uh, today we just finished with the General Assembly for Ripathin and the bishop uh, convened all the, the parish priests and heads of institutions of the Diocese of Boya so that we brainstorm on the way forward for Repathim, that is Regional Purchase Microfinance that will save us our financial house in the Diocese of Boya. And I think that the presentation of the bishop about shares, distribution of shares, is a very good idea that will uh, solve the problem of financial sustainability institutions because as a parish you must also think of the, the future you know you cannot just eat now and forget about tomorrow that is we must always pay attention to good and uh, it help us to invest so all these ideas of shares and all those things is like investing our money so that you can heal more money barrister lifanje kosmas muki is my name i'm the chairperson of the co-cathedral parish uh, we were invited to this General Assembly of the Diocesan Microfinancial Institution, which uh, his Lordship uh, Bishop Bibi had put in place. Amongst the, the things we have discussed today, uh, the Bishop has made a presentation of the objectives of the microfinancial institution. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to cut down the stress which parishioners are going through, making too many contributions. You see, the financial world is a different business world. If the parishes uh, actively participate in running this, our financial institution, the Christians, we're going to make a lot of money with the dividends, will cut down contributions which uh, parishioners are making. We are for the better capability and that's a boya. Of course, the meeting that you have, have called for the patron. And so, I know that most of the issues that uh, we maybe uh, other parts in join or credit union have come to us. So we are now the, the accommodation and also the share model and everything so that uh, the less the expenditure and the burden of Christians in this aspect of this institution. The shares now, as we just said, is not by any priest but for the diocese and parishes. Those reactions there from various attendees who took part in the General Assembly meeting of Regina Apache's Finance earlier today at the Bishop Pius Our Memorial Pastoral Center in Moliko, interviewed by our reporter Jamla Tutontan. Now, let's speak on something else. Calkis of the Diocese of Boya have been called upon to assist, collaborate, and work collectively. Or rather, the Christians have been called to work collectively with their catechists who have just been appointed in the last appointments. The call was made by the pastoral director for the Diocese of Boya, Reverend Father Tsofi Seka, in an exclusive interview he had with DMR TV. This comes a few days to uh, the official assignments, the pickup of the official assignments for those catechists, that is July 1st, 2024. Let's meet Nadesh Mehnechung, who took interest in this story. She now gives us an insight. The Ministry of Catechists are entrusted to the pastoral care of the local ordinary. The document of pastoral ministry of the Bishop Christus Dominus, paragraph 14, says the ordinary must ensure that this ministry is enforced in his church. As the Bishop sees the need to move a priest from one parish to another, so he sees the need to move a catechist from one parish to another, depending on pastoral needs and experience 
needs of the person and in the contribution in the growth of the church. The pastoral director of the Diocese of Boya, Reverend Father Teofil Seka, expansiates on the secular of the classification of catechists in the Diocese of Boya in line with the church. So Boya, we have the full-time catechists that are either uh, goody trained or those who have studied in the St. John Paul II Chilega Institute, Jopasit Boya, or those also for a long time, because of experience, they can be taken and employed by the diocese as full time. And secondly, we have part time catechists. These are people who serve part time in, in main mission stations or outstations or in institutions while carrying out their own occupation in life. So part time means that you offer service to the church when available and you carry on your other activities and occupations in life. Voluntary catechists are those who offer their services for free as catechists for love of the church and want to contribute to the growth of the church and in evangelization, either in the main mission, or in our stations, or in small Christian communities or institutions. He further adds that these catechists have all the benefits in line with their job description stated in the policy. First consequence is that in their own category, they are registered for those who are still of working age, are registered into the National Insurance Fund, what is commonly known as SEMPES. And then they are also paid through the the diocesan bank, which is uh, Repafi, no, Regina Parties uh, Finance Limited. And so these are some of the things. And then they're also having a job description. Remuneration is clear according to the secular on the 23rd of May 2024. Father Teofil Seeker beckons on the Cali Christians of each parish to understand that this appointment is timely and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the Christly faithful are advised to collaborate with the newly appointed catechists in their various parishes. It's a call for all Christians again to double their effort to make sure that the catechists who are also pastoral workers and do a lot of work, as we will see in their job description, that they need to be supported, they need to be loved. And what is very interesting also in this catechist uh, story is about the catechist appreciation day in the Diocese of Boya. You know, the policy clearly states out that once in a year, mobilization should be done like we do for harvest, like we do for fundraising, to be able that on this catechist appreciation day, we mobilize funds and resources, even material, to be able to support them in their life and ministry. Christians are therefore called upon to assist and work with these new catechists as they take up their new pastoral duties on July 1st, 2024. Now, some aspirants of the Sisters of St. Therese of the Child Jesus have undergone a three-day sit it's a three-day life in discernment, a program into the religious congregation. The program that started on the 22nd of June ended yesterday, Tuesday, the 25th of June, here in Boya. Sister Emmeline Menjo, in charge of vocations and journeying with the aspirants in the congregation, accompanied them all through the process through prayers and equally talks and sharing of life experiences as far as the congregation is concerned. Reverend Father Martin J has details of this story in the following report. Some aspirants of the Sisters of St. Therese of the Child Jesus have rounded up a three days live in at the Postulancy community at Buitiva in Buya. The Sisters of St. Therese being an indigenous congregation founded on the 25th of June 1963 by Bishop Jules Peters engage and submit themselves entirely to emulate the spirituality of their patron saint, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus. This is hinged on dedication to the church and doing the will of God in joyful simplicity and love. The spirituality of their founder, Bishop Jules Peters, of blessed memory rooted on the following words, Ut unum sint, that they all may be one, is also lived in praxis by the sisters. 
The aspirants come from within the dioceses comprising the ecclesiastical province of Bamenda and in other dioceses out of the ecclesiastical province. Sister Emmeline Menjo, in charge of journeying with the aspirants of this congregation for the past three years, gave highlights concerning the live-in and its relevance. Each year we organize live-in. Live-in is a period during which we bring our aspirants together and we teach them about the spirituality of the sisters, the apostolate, anything concerning the sisters. But we don't limit ourselves only to that. We also let them know about the world, globalization, and other things that will help them to properly discern their vocation. This time around, we had the live-in in, a, in the postulancy community in Boya at Bitiva. We are rounding up the live-in today. Uh, we started on Sunday. So these three days have been really fruitful, and I believe the aspirants learned a lot. We, we are hoping and encouraging them as they live today to continue discerning their vocation, to listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit so that they are able to follow that path ordained for them in their lives. Some of the aspirants of the Sisters of St. Teresa Colley gave their remarks by the end of the session. I actually aspirants of the Sisters of St. Teresa who came for the live-in as to spend some time with the sisters to get to know them better and to know the environment. Well, so far it has been a very good experience, I can say that, among some other things, among some things that, or experiences that we've had, I can really say what has touched me very much are the teachings we have, we had, we learned a lot of things, we, had, we learned not only about their spirituality, their life, we also learned about some um, social topics like globalization, it was quite interesting and it was un unusual for us to have that kind of talk. We, we learned about finding who we are. Of course, that's why we came here. We came here to discern. We came here to know the path that we're heading, the path we are taking in life. As the aspirants take a lever to their various destinations, the discernment process remains a continuous one as they all look forward to lead a life worthy of the calling they have received. Good luck to the aspirants there. Now, let's take you a bit out of the church, this time to Community Action, where the Divisional Officer for Boya, Abba Abdurrahman, has taken some measures to ensure that the water management crisis in the Wovila community, small support here in Boya, is actually brought to rest. One of such is the creation of a water management scheme committee that will manage the water catchment that supplies the supplies water to Wovila village in small support and to its neighboring communities. He was speaking during a meeting recently that was yesterday the 25th of June which he convened in that community in small support. Eileen Sama from our newsroom was up, uh, oh, she attended that meeting and came back with this report for our newscast. It was in a very tense atmosphere here at the community hall of Wovila village small supper that the people, the traditional council and the old boys and girls association members met with the deal of Boya in the presence of the deputy mayor of Boya for a water management crisis meeting held after numerous failed schedules due to the fact that Abba Abdurrahman, the deal of Boya, was not available, a situation he explained to the people and tabled his apologies. He then gave the floor to each party to express themselves from the chiefs to the quarter head, then to the Old Boys and Girls Association Small Support. Abba Abdurrahman diagnosed the problem tearing apart the people of Wovila. We have come here because there has been a tension between the stakeholders, I mean mainly the some members of the community and the entire uh, village traditional council and all of that and I think it is because in some way people have been doing things in a uh, haphazard manner. At the end of the meeting using his administrative progress the DO drafted some resolutions. That's why one of the decisions we have taken today is that a water management committee that include everybody every stakeholder be put in place we are coming back here under uh, 
with the collaboration of the council, whose responsibility is to, to see that those water management committee are put in place in all the areas where there is community water. So on Tuesday, we are coming back here. We invite even the other communities who are not part of this village, like Bojongo, Bishop Rogan, and all of that, so that we have a water management committee that will be responsible to take care of the good management of this water. During the meeting, it was revealed that in the past, some members of the community destroyed some pipes connecting water from the catchment to other areas. These defaulters were warned severely. Water is one of the strategic points that is being secure, even at the level of the state like bridges and all of that. So anybody tampering with it, because somebody, you know, we are in a crisis zone. So uh, some an ill intention, somebody can come and tamper with it, put something and put the life of our population at risk. So anybody that is not duly authorized, touching the pipe and all of that, will face the law. Ka Eugene Kebi is a quarter head in Wovila, small support. He is satisfied with the resolutions taken. Some members of our community never wanted or were not respecting the traditional authority of the village. And the outing of the duo today, he has put a stamp and seal to everyone who was here that there is, no, there, there is no association or union that can be above the traditional council. The structure that he has advised that we should put in place, a water management committee made up of all these stakeholders under the auspices of the traditional ruler of small support of La village, I think is a wonderful milestone and is so heartwarming. Denizens are also satisfied after this meeting. I'm very happy. The deal we waited for him last week, he did not come, but he has apologized and we have understood with him. And all what he came to do here, what he has said is okay by us. The meeting wrapped up with a visit the water catchment at Wovila, a source that supplies to Bishop Rogan and Sasa Colleges, among other areas. Now let's talk education. Second semester examinations continue at the Catholic University Institute of Boya, CUIB, this June 26, 2024. The students in different schools and departments uh, took their first courses of the examination yesterday and in an environment of calm and serenity. We have Reverend Father Martin J who captured the environment there yesterday and compiled this report. After three months of serious lectures and classroom interaction between the university dons and their students, it is high time for the students to prove their worth with regard to how much they have assimilated as the Entrepreneurial Catholic University Institute of Boya witness the commencement of the second semester examinations today, the 25th of June 2024. Barely a few minutes before 8 a.m., the students are all seated in a very serene and calm atmosphere in order to face the examination and show mastery of a proper comprehension of the content and subject matter delivered by the university professors in the various courses. No case of insubordination or late coming has been recorded so far, as one of the administrative staff indicated. We began the exams today in a very calm and peaceful atmosphere, and the students are very enthusiastic to, to see that they get done with their, their papers. So everything has been smooth, and we are hoping that it will continue to the end of these exams. Yeah, and uh, we so far we've not had any case of uh, indiscipline malpractices. So we are very happy that this time around our students are very much conscious of the rules and uh, regulations governing exams in CUIB. At the end of the first course, one of the students gave the following remark. My first year in the School of Journalism and Mass Communication. Today was our first day of our exams and uh, we started with our first course today and it was beautiful, it was good given the fact that to my own best I prepared and what I prepared for actually is what came and uh, I am optimistic for the rest of the courses which come in the days ahead and I'm going back now to study more for the upcoming courses and uh, I pray for the success, for success and the best. The second semester examination session continues and the students look forward to approaching the upcoming courses with calmness 
and an optimistic spirit of emerging successful at the end. Now let's end our news by taking you out of Cameroon's national borders. We make a stop first in Kenya, where a protest has been on against uh, attacks in parliaments and death and destruction of property is the current state in that country as we speak. The citizens of that country continue a nationwide protest against the tax that have been increased uh, today. Uh, they continue the protest today. And the pre-trial chamber of the International Criminal Court has issued arrest warrant for two members of the uh, Russian uh, state. Let us have these stories and more in a foreign news roundup with Hilarion Clinton. Our foreign page opens in Kenya where at least 13 protesters have said to have been killed during a protest and a session of parliament went up in flame as demonstrations continue. The protest against new tax proposal escalated on Tuesday as an angry crowd broke through police lines to storm parliament in the capital, Nairobi, before setting part of it ablaze. Kenyan's president, William Ruto, addressing the angry population, said all means were being deployed to frustrate any attempts by dangerous criminals to undermine the security and stability of the country. Protests against an unpopular finance bill, which includes several tax raises, have been ongoing for days. But it escalated on Tuesday as members of parliament passed an amended bill. Protesters break into the parliament, vandalizing the interior and setting parts of the complex. The Law Society of Kenya continues to call on international criminal investigators to help families quest for justice, saying that it has reported that soldiers were engaging protesters in parliament. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres said he was deeply saddened by the reports of death and injuries, including that of journalists and medical personnel. He has also urged the Kenyan authorities to exercise restraint and called for all demonstrations to be peaceful. Out of Kenya now we take you somewhere else where 58 members of parliament from Jacob Zuma's MK party have taken their oath at the National Assembly 10 days after the official ceremony. Though they still dispute the election result, they have decided to join the opposition as a broad national unity government is being formed. Opponents of President Ramaphosa, including Zuzil Zuma, daughter of former President Jacob Zuma and former Judge Philip Hopfield, have taken their seat. Despite the MK's party's aim to abolish the constitution, the members of parliament of this party have taken the oath to uphold it. Let's end out of Africa. A pre-trial chamber of the International Criminal Court issued on Tuesday 25th, June 2024, arrest warrants for Russian's former defense minister, Sergei Shaigu, and current chief of the general staff of the Russian Armed Forces. Valery Galasimov. The judges say they are reasonable grounds to believe that the officials bear responsibility for missile strikes carried out by the Russian army against the Ukraine electric infrastructure from at least 10 October 2022 until at least 9 March 2024. Shego and Valery are allegedly responsible for the war crimes of directing attacks at civilians' objects and causing excess incidental harm to civilians or damage to civilians' property and the crime against humanity of inhuman acts against the Rome status. Last year, the court issued a warrant for Russian's president arrest, yet it was not respected. It is therefore uncertain whether these arrest warrants for these two officials will be effected. From Kenya to South Africa and Russia, that's where we end our newscast tonight with that foreign page by Hillary Clinton. But before we go, let's have a quick relook at the stories that we talk in this newscast. We started here in Boya Diocese, where the Bishop of Boya, some members of the Presbyterium, staff of some institutions and, uh, uh, and services, plus those of the newly created Regional Parties Finance with acronym RIPAFIN met earlier this Wednesday, June 26, to strategize on the possibility of parishes within the diocese holding shares in the financial institution. The enlarged meeting 
took place at Bishop Pius Our Memorial Pastoral Center. And just July 1st, a few days as that date approaches, Kata Keys transferred within the Diocese of Boya expected in their new stations of work, given their enormous contribution in assisting priests. The pastoral director for Boya, Reverend Father Tiofi Seka, has called on Christians to give them utmost support and the struggle for the people of Wovila, the community in Sumo support village here in Boya, uh, have been assured of the possibility to have possible water in the community. Divisional Officer for Boya, Abba Abdurrahman, chaired a recent meeting in that community with members to proffer an ending so to the water situation of War Villa community in small support. Well, that was a package for you in this midweek edition of Divine Mercy Prime. Recall that at 8 p.m. tomorrow, we will be here for another edition, a fresh edition of our news. But at 7.30 in the morning, we'll be here again with another edition of the news. Follow us again at 1 p.m. every day for more news on ZMR TV. On our radio service tonight, 8 p.m., you have our newscast, as well as 8 a.m. tomorrow in the morning on frequency modulation 97.1 and 91.5 in Limbe. Thanks for watching. I'm Jude Mbako. Have a blessed night.